uh, Christianity or, uh, or, or the Bible Belt, et cetera, in the U.S. and, and Islam in, in the Middle East. And uh, so, so why do we hear so much well, about these that? These things don't go. These things don't come and go in even uh, measurable waves. For example, the fastest growing religion in South America is probably uh, Pentecostal or Protestantism. The Catholic Church is on the defensive there. On the other hand, in Africa, the Catholic Church is growing very rapidly. Um, Islam is having several civil wars within itself, uh, both between the, the modernizers and the fundamentalists, but also between the Sunni and the Shia, um, between both of those and discrepant sects like the Ahmadi, for example, or the Ishmaeli Muslims. So there's a permanent roiling about which kind of faith it is, impervious um, though that may seem, sorry, impenetrable, though that may seem to the outsider, and so forth. But the, there's a steady growth of people who say enough of this. Um, we can live a moral life without religion, and the most successful societies are those that separate the church from the state by law and enforce it by their constitutions. These are the happiest, most prosperous, most democratic countries. And we have to stop taking this for granted and be willing to defend it against the endless attempts by theocrats of different stripes to take that away from us. That on this line, we will take a stand and we will fight. We being the, the atheist community, you almost sound no, like you're no, an organized many, group. No, many, many people who don't believe in God, uh, of course, will be involved. But many people who uh, are in doubt or are agnostic, uh, but who think that, say, the First Amendment to the United States Constitution is worth fighting for, that the Congress shall make no law establishing a religion, that no one's entitled to define their mm. country, okay, gotcha. this, yours or mine, as a Christian one, say, let alone as a, as a, a potentially one day Muslim one, as people are now starting to demand. One day the caliphate will extend to Canada too if you're really right. lucky. No, no, no. Look what happened to Iran when that happened. Look how they ruined and beggared a great civilized country. And one that I know you know about. A, lo a lot has happened to Iran. Yes. Well, Chris, you're here in Canada to uh, essentially to add three commandments to the original uh, ten. What, what do you think is missing from the Ten Commandments? Uh, what, what, what will you be bringing to the stage? Well, I can tell you what is otherwise commanded in the Bible. I mean, and very near, in verses very closely uh, adjunct to the famous ones. Remember, the Ten Commandments appears twice in the text. Uh, um, it's in um, Exodus and it's in Deuteronomy. Um, slightly different versions. And there are all kinds of other instructions in between. And these include genocide, uh, rape, uh, slavery, um, mutilation of children, and so on. So you could, you could probably get an idea of what I might recommend um, for commandments um, if you thought of what the Bible already did recommend that was horrible. And I, again, I'll end on, on the question I always uh, emphasize. If people think that religion is morality, they, they have to account for the immoral things that religion demands that people do. It's not in the name of. It's in the word of God himself. These are commandments and instructions. For, these are warrants for genocide, rape, slavery, infant mutilation, and worse. Um, by working out what the negation of those would be, how, how to, humans can emancipate themselves from the, the evil propaganda um, of a man-made God, then you could probably guess what my contrary recommendations would be. Well, that's a circuitous route, but I, I think I follow you. I know you can. I know your intuition is up to it. <laughs> Let me end off here. Even outside of the context of religion, we can probably all agree that we still have to le lead our lives by certain values. What do you think it takes to lead a good life? Um, for me, um, irony, um, literature as the source of reflection on moral and ethical and human topics, um, laughing at the misfortunes of others, that gets me through a lot of the day. Um, uh, love, uh, and some of the things that go with. Um, the possibility of passing on your genes to children, the only kind of immortality you'll ever get. And did I mention this already? Laughing at the misfortune of others. <laughs> and, and also and of being proved right, um, being vindicated in arguments that where other people wish they hadn't had with you. They have to say, okay, I was wrong and you were right. 
and, maybe that one. And when maybe they do that, that you can that, laugh at their maybe, misfortune. Maybe that one above all, and also adding terrifically to the <laughs> to gale of laughter one can have at the the sufferings that they're undergoing. Christopher Hitchens, I, I I thank you for this. Thanks for making the time to come in today. Oh, it's an honor. Thanks for having me. Christopher Hitchens is the author of more than ten books, including "God Is Not Great: How Religion Poisons Everything." And Christopher Hitchens joined me here live in Studio Q. 